Welcome back to the Post and Cocky Preview Show. I'm your host Jeremy Sullivan here with lead analyst Ryan Mace, and we're talking Gamecock football once again. Last week the Gamecocks completely dominated on offense, and you couldn't ask more from the defense as they held Kentucky to just three points. Yeah, the South Carolina started off sluggish again, though. Bruce Ellington lost a fumble on the opening kickoff, giving Kentucky good field position to start the game. That led to a 28-yard Craig McIntosh field goal, giving Kentucky their early 3-0 lead. The Gamecocks answered back quickly as Connor Shaw hit Alshon Jeffrey in the front corner of the end zone for a 20-yard touchdown, putting Carolina up 7-3. Shaw hit Justice Cunningham for an 11-yard touchdown pass in the second quarter that gave Carolina a 13-3 advantage. Shaw connected with Jeffrey again on a 24-yard touchdown on the very next drive, putting the Gamecocks up 20-3 at halftime. The Gamecocks went back to work in the third quarter as Connor Shaw threw his fourth touchdown pass of the day hitting Nick Jones on a post pattern for a 25-yard touchdown, extending the lead to 27-3. After a pair of Jay Wooten field goals, Bruce Ellington ran for a 61-yard touchdown out of the Wildcat formation, extending Carolina's lead to 40-3, as the Gamecocks completely dismantled Kentucky, going on to win the game 54-3. The defense came up big again, allowing only 96 yards to the Wildcats. They also came up with four interceptions and forced three fumbles, allowing only three points in a game for the second time this season. This was a big confidence boost for South Carolina. Hopefully they'll be able to build on this win as they go on the road for the next three weeks. As you mentioned, South Carolina's defense has been showing up big all season long, and again last week they showed up and made a big statement against the Wildcats. Uh, tell me just how good Ellis Johnson's defense is this year. Well, as you said, Carolina's defense has been the main point of this team so far this season. They've played better and better as the season has gone on and are now top 10 in the country in total defense at number 9. They rank 3rd in the country in passing defense, allowing only 168 yards per game through the air and their pass rush has been a big part of that. The Gamecocks have registered 13 sacks this season and the defensive line has had a lot of success in disrupting the opponent's rhythm so far this season. If South Carolina can continue this success for the rest of the year, it will give them a good chance to win throughout the remainder of the schedule. Unfortunately for the Gamecocks, there are some off-the-field distractions surrounding former starting quarterback Steven Garcia. This comes just one week after Steven Garcia was replaced by Connor Shaw at starting quarterback position. Yeah, Garcia was dismissed from the team on Tuesday after violating the terms of his reinstatement contract with the university. Garcia finishes his career as the third best statistical quarterback in South Carolina history with over 7,500 yards and 47 touchdowns. He was 20-14 and 14 in his career as a starter and it'll be interesting to see how the team responds this weekend after losing one of the leaders of this team in Garcia. Speaking of the rest of the season, the Gamecocks will begin their road test this weekend as they travel to Mississippi State in their first of three straight away games. How do the Bulldogs look this season? Well, they're coming off of a 21-3 win over UAB in a game in which they trailed 3-0 at halftime. Their quarterback Chris Relf has had his struggles lately and was replaced last week with Tyler Russell, so there may be a little bit of a quarterback controversy brewing there. They have struggled on offense this year, but their defense has been the strong point as they allow 20.2 points per game, which ranks 26th in the country. They have yet to win an SEC contest and are looking for their first conference win. Although Mississippi State hasn't looked good this season in conference play, road games always propose a test to any team. What can South Carolina do this weekend to jumpstart their road test with a victory? Well, I think first if they can contain Vic Ballard, they'll be in good shape. Ballard has been the main focal point of the Bulldog offense so far this year, and he ranks fifth in the SEC in rushing yards. He started off with a bang this season, but has since slowed down. But if Mississippi State can get him going early in the game, their offense has the capability to be very efficient. Secondly, I think the Gamecocks need to get Marcus Lattimore involved early. Lattimore had little action last week until the second half, and although he finished with over 100 yards, he was never really a part of the game plan. Mississippi State has a decent secondary led by Jonathan Banks, so the Gamecocks may not be able to rely on Connor Shaw's arm like they did last week, so they will need a strong game from Lattimore to be successful. Thirdly, I think they need to limit their penalties. The Gamecocks had several drives stalled last week against Kentucky due to penalties. When you're on the road in the SEC, it is tough to win, especially whenever your offense is shooting itself in the foot. If Carolina limits the offensive miscues in Starkville this weekend, I think the offense will have some success in sustaining drives and scoring points. Now, it's going to be another test for the young quarterback, Connor Shaw, and for the rest of the team as they begin their road test at Mississippi State this weekend. Who do you like in this game? Uh, I like South Carolina. I think uh, Connor Shaw is going to be able to continue his success from last weekend, and the defense is going to play well enough to win again. And I like him winning a close one in this one, 24-20. 
All right, that'll do it for another edition of the Post and Cocky Preview Show. Leave us your predictions on Facebook or Twitter to be a guest predictor for next week. And we'll catch you next week as we look back on the Mississippi State game and give you our midseason report.